All right, so I've had the LG 42 inch uh, C2 OLED TV for about nine months now. As a creative professional, I was in the market for a new display for my computer and switching from an old 27 inch IPS monitor, I wanted something new, fresh, and obviously gave me all that color accuracy that I needed. At first I was concerned about the overall size of the screen, I just thought it was way too big to be practical. I often work with multiple different apps and many windows open at the same time, so I was really strongly considering a dual monitor setup. However, I found that the size of the screen is actually just as good and especially with the help of some apps that I use. Now this TV comes with two plastic feet and while they do feel a bit cheap, they're pretty sturdy. The only real downside that I found about these feet is that you can't twist or swivel the screen like you can with other monitors. So unless you mount it or get creative like 3D print your own legs like some people have done, um, you're pretty much stuck with them as they are. As for fitting on the desk, it is a bit of a space hog, but it does seem to fit my 180 centimeter desk pretty well. When it comes to viewing distance, I sit about 70 centimeters away, that's about an arm's length, and that gives me good coverage of the whole screen. I'm not having to strain my head or move in awkward ways. Surprisingly, the size difference didn't bother me at all, coming from a 27 inch screen. And let me tell you, having a 42 inch screen on your desk just takes gaming and entertainment to a whole new level of immersion. So my typical day revolves around 3D work and motion design with a bit of photo video editing mixed in. I use software like Power Toys to rearrange all my layouts with shortcuts and at 100% scaling I can comfortably place my application windows anywhere I like without them feeling too small because of the screen space. The panel's high refresh rate of 120Hz actually makes general UI navigation quite smooth. Editing and animating just feels so much more responsive and it makes it a real enjoyable experience. One important note is that if you are using it as a PC monitor and you want to take advantage of that high refresh rate, make sure to use a HDMI 2.1 cable. Be sure to set your TV into PC mode for the best performance. And also keep in mind that you'll need to have a graphics card that actually supports HDMI 2.1. For NVIDIA users, this would be the 3 Series and above. And also remember to change your graphics settings. A lot of people miss this detail. You might not actually be using 120 Hertz. And if you haven't experienced that before, you might completely skip over it. So go into your graphics settings and make sure it's set to 120 Hertz. One thing I do want to talk about is the user experience on the TV. I personally would have really liked to have more custom user picture mode options because currently you can only have a set number of picture modes that's already made for you by LG. And although you can customize those, you can't really have variants of the same ones and that can get pretty frustrating. For example, I use filmmaker mode and I like to have a low brightness while I work during the day. But for entertainment, I like to have a high brightness, uh, especially for HDR. And so anytime I'm switching from work to entertainment and I have to manually change my brightness by navigating through the menus, that can get pretty frustrating. So having the ability to save different variants of the same picture mode would make things so much easier. And this brings me to my next point, which is I wish you could save the picture modes uh, to shortcut buttons. That would save so much more time because I wouldn't have to go through all the menus again to select my picture modes. I could simply press a button and that would be that. Now let's talk a little bit about color. So the LG C2 covers 100% of the sRGB and Rec 709 color spaces, which is really awesome. It also covers a respectable 97% of the DCI-P3 color space, which means it is a future-proof panel. Color accuracy is important to me as a creative professional, so this just gives me that extra confidence when I'm making my content. I always use the TV in filmmaker mode, especially if I'm creating or watching content. And the reason for that is I'm a strong believer in keeping the filmmaker's intent, and this mode gives you the most accurate colors possible on this TV. There are other picture modes that you can use. Um, they'll give you a variety of different looks. For example, sport mode will give you a more saturated look and there are other different flavors. And out of the box, this TV is fairly well calibrated. It will give you decent colors out of the box. Keep in mind, this does vary panel to panel. So if you do have a color calibrator, I would recommend that you use one. I myself have a X-Rite i1 Display Pro and I use that with DisplayCal to further calibrate this TV. 
As you'd expect with most OLED screens, the viewing angle is really good. Colors don't shift too much when you're off angle and the contrast obviously remains amazing. I have noticed a slightly reddish tint on the screen and it's mostly visible when there's a bright white window open. It seems to be prominent in uh, LG OLED TVs and it's probably due to the panel coating that they use. So if you are someone who likes to be a bit closer up uh, text clarity with LG's WRGB pixel layout, I can see that being an issue. If you get close enough to the TV, you can actually start seeing some fringing on the edges. For me and the viewing distance I have with the TV, it's about an arm's length. Um, it really hasn't been that bad. I haven't noticed any glaring text clarity issues. There have also been some complaints about the ABL, which is a automatic brightness limiter. And what that does is that if you've got a static content on your screen, it just dims the brightness over time. It doesn't bother me all that much because I generally don't view static content for long enough. And on the rare occasion that I do, moving your mouse or your application window just kicks the brightness back to normal. And you can turn it off if you want to by using a service remote or there's an application called Color Control that you can use to turn it off. You can void your warranty doing it and you do put the TV at a risk of burning. Although from my research, people online have been using it with it off for thousands of hours and they haven't had any burning issues. And on that topic of burn-in prevention, but thankfully the TV comes with a number of great features that help prevent this. These would be the ABL, like I mentioned earlier, the pixel shift feature, which shifts the pixels every few minutes, the logo dimming, which dims logos if you're watching sports or news stations. And every four hours, there's an automatic pixel refresh. And this just allows the TV to refresh its pixels and remove any image retention from throughout your day. You will have to turn your TV off with your remote and make sure that you don't turn it off at the wall. And I do use all of these features, except the pixel shift just got a little bit annoying, especially with windows being cropped off screen. And in addition to these features, I also took the extra step and I set my taskbar to auto hide so that it's not visible and I also turn my desktop icons off. And I don't think hiding the desktop is totally necessary, especially if you vary your content. I also use a awesome app called LG Companion and what this lets me do is actually set a timer so that if I walk away, the screen will turn itself off and I don't have to worry about any burn-in. And on top of all of that, I have seen comments from users who have had LG OLED panels and they've had it for many years with thousands of hours, some even programming, which means a lot of static windows and they haven't had any burn-ins. And that does give me a lot of confidence for the longevity of this panel. If you've never experienced HDR on a capable TV before, this TV will blow your mind. And that's because our eyes perceive contrast in a logarithmic way. So that's why OLEDs are amazing with HDR, just because that contrast is what gives you that pop. And you will see this for yourself when you watch a well-mastered HDR movie or TV show. For example, I watched John Wick 4 in HDR and I was just blown away by how great it looked. There were a lot of dark scenes and bright colors and bright lights and that is where this OLED really shines. It gave the image a real three-dimensional feel to it. Gaming on this TV is equally awesome. It doesn't matter if you're playing an RPG or a competitive FPS. This TV has one of the lowest input lags in the market, so that'll give you all the confidence you need when you're gaming. You'll want to be using the game optimizer mode for all your gaming. Without it, you're not really taking advantage of the best response times. And really, there's not much else to say. It's that good. You're gonna have an awesome time gaming on this TV. So there you have it. It's no surprise why OLEDs are becoming popular with PC users and I think manufacturers have started to listen to that. If you're on the market for a new display and you watch a variety of content and you're looking for something to give you that oomph, this TV is for you. If you're someone like me who's a content creator and as long as you're willing to take a little bit of care, I think this TV would still be a great fit. Otherwise, if you're someone who likes to put something up and walk away and not have to worry about it, I probably wouldn't recommend this just yet. And that's it. Thanks a bunch for tuning into this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Otherwise, catch you next time.